Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So I've heard a lot of rumblings online about this Affinity Photo software which seems like another piece of capable software for astro image editing. It's very much like Photoshop but uh, very different as well and it's a lot cheaper. I think I've paid $23.99 for the copy of the software whereas my Photoshop sort of subscription is like nine ninety nine a month. It does come with like cloud storage though. Um but yeah that's nine ninety nine a month for like a twelve month contract. Whereas this is like a one time cost of well, it was on offer for twenty three ninety nine. I think it usually costs like forty six pounds or forty three pounds or something like that. But anyway, it's it's kind of like the new kid on the block. Um I've had a few emails and a few comments asking if I'm ever going to do some tutorials on Affinity Photo so I took the opportunity that the other day to download it and um, yeah I've spent a, f a little while kind of working things out and I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on how to do some basic image editing in this software. If you like what you see don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. This video is no means like by no means a comprehensive guide. It's just to get you started um and kind of stretching and doing, you know, some basic stuff to your images. So, first things first, I'm going to open up an image. It's a 32-bit TIFF of the Orion Nebula. Now, it you can stretch in affinity as 32 bits if you know photoshop you know everybody kind of like switches to 16 bit pretty much straight away when they open up an image so that's what i'm going to do here i'm going to go to document convert format and i'm going to select rgb 16 and then i'm going to make sure black scaled is selected and now i'm going to do an initial stretch of the image now in Photoshop, you kind of like all your tools are up here, but over in Affinity, they're over here. So I'm going to click on levels, or it's the same con uh, control and L as a shortcut. So for this first stretch, I'm going to leave the black slider exactly where it is, and I'm going to move the gamma slider to the left. And then I'm going to click merge and you'll see our histogram peak has suddenly appeared and our image is slowly is is getting lighter um, this time i'm going to move the black level slider so that the line meets the histogram peak and i'm going to move the gamma slider to the left there's no on-screen kind of like white line where to show you where it is so don't do like a crazy stretch and go too much kind of sort of lighten it sort of midway and I'm going to click merge again and then again I'm going to take the black slider to the left of the peak and the gamma slider to the left now notice the histogram on the right here is changing as you do these stretches I kind of get it tr I'm trying to get it sort of around a third of the way across just to show like a good level of exposure in the image so nearly there and uh, we'll try one more it might not take it it's a very 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 small stretch for that last stretch and merge okay so i've got a nicely stretched image now I'm going to go to document and rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise because this is the kind of framing that I, I wanted for this image and then I'm going to crop the edges now some say you should do this first but I wanted to see exactly what where I needed to crop before stretching so there we go I'm literally just going to crop those edges okay so we've got a nice amount of detail in the nebula so now I'm going to do a curves adjustment so once again 
it's here let me see if I can find it there we go curves now you can either just place points on the image and do like a nice S S curve to give it a bit more contrast or you can do something very clever and click on picker now I want this background to be a little bit darker so I'm going to click on the background and then I'm just going to drag the mouse down and you'll notice the dot the background getting darker and then I want this nebula to get a little bit lighter so I'm going to click on the outside edges of the nebula and I'm going to drag it up just a touch and then I'm going to click merge you've also got a history and everything in in affinity so you can go back so it's non-destructive next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some colour adjustment, some saturation still trying to find everything so I'm going to go to vibrance I'm going to increase the vibrance a bit and I'm going to increase the saturation a fair bit and I'm going to click merge now it's not you don't have to just click merge you can do different ways of blending and see how it, it turns out I mean some of these might take your fancy if you're doing something a little bit out there there's a few more options than Photoshop. That one's cool. But um, for this purpose, I'm just going to leave it as normal. So for noise reduction, you can either go to filters, noise, denoise, and you can do it here. Or if you're used to doing your noise reduction in Camera Raw in Photoshop, you can go to Develop Persona. And for that, you're going to want to come to at Details. So you can do a bit of sharpening first. This performs very much like Camera Raw. And let's add some noise reduction too. So I'm just going to do some 30% luminance, 30% colour noise. And then once you've made all the required adjustments you can even add noise if it's too smooth you just click develop sometimes it takes a little while so if that's a little bit too smooth you can just undo it either by going to edit and undo or you can do control and Z so if we go back to noise denoise obviously giving it a little bit too much to think about and if we zoom in you can see that's starting to look pretty good we haven't blown out the core either and there's a nice level of detail so while I'm here 
you can actually use plugins, Photoshop plugins with Affinity Photo. To get them to work, you have to go to Edit, Preferences, Photoshop plugins, and then you can click Allow Unknown plugins to use, to be used. Um, I put all my Photoshop plugins in a specific folder. Um, unfortunately, it's called Photoshop Actions on, on my computer. Unfortunately, actions do not work. So if you've bought like Astronomy Tools action set or Annie's Astro actions, they won't work in Affinity. But what does work is stuff like HLVG and the Nick collection. If we go to fill plugins HLVG and you can do Hasta La Vista Green as normal and you can also do things from the filters such as like dust and scratches to do a bit of star reduction you, or you can go to so if I go to navigator Ah, sorry, layers and then live filters. Oh, you can also do a minimum blur. To reduce stars as well, it won't work very well on this image because there's not it's not a massive star field but that's the way you can do it so once you're done go to file export and then you can choose how to export your file um and what size and quality etc but that is some basic image editing in Affinity Photo. As always, thanks for watching and bye for now.